So over roughly four billion years, we've had living things on this planet. They've all essentially evolved high performance materials to survive everywhere. And when we think of those, the most obvious one most people think of is something like spider silk. This is the material that makes Spider-Man work stronger than steel, tougher than Kevlar. Turns out it's made by eating flies and moths uh, and spinning that into a pro protein fiber. And so we started this technology company right out of graduate school to take that material and turn it into something we can use for consumer products. My guess is it wasn't a very easy path to get from there to here. What happened? Uh, a a short 14 years, yeah. <laughs> when you first did it, did you really just try and get the spiders to do this for you? Pretty much. Uh, you look at our first office, um, we had a bunch of people ran away with arachnophobia, uh, about 100 free range spiders that were about, uh, you know, teacup saucer size. Um, <laughs> we, that, that experiment ended real quick. And, and now, how do you do it? How, how do you come up with this, uh, this spider silk? Yeah, so when nature makes a material, all the information to make it's encoded in the DNA of the organism. We copy that out, put it in a scalable system. Uh, we use yeast, like making beer, wine, or bread. So global scale biotechnology, uh, grow it up in a giant stainless steel tank, collect it, and then spin it, making fibers like you'd make uh, rayon or nylon. So what's it look like? So at the end of the day, you have a fiber that's a, this is a yarn that we made a product earlier this year. It was the first commercial product made out of spider silk. This is a yarn made out of spider silk, grown in a tank, and then we'll take that and knit it up into a final product. So we did a line of uh, knit spider silk ties earlier this year. Yeah, well, you say it's stronger than Kevlar. What does that mean when you're wearing a tie that's stronger than Kevlar? So we, did a little market research. Turns out a tie, no one really cares how strong it is. Um, so we actually can tune the fibers to be weaker or stronger depending on the property we want to go after. With the tie, what we really went after was this property for being able to um, capture dye. So when you dye a, a protein fiber, uh, silk loses dye pretty easily, fades over time. This holds dye about six times better than natural silk. So you get there. more brilliant colors? Yeah, more brilliant colors, less waste. And there's a big sustainability play with all of this. We've got a big problem in this world with um, the amount of pl plastics that go into our clothing uh, and where that ends in landfill. How, how does this play out in, in a market where I might be looking for things that are, that are made with this? What kind of partnerships have you developed? Sure, so we've got two announced partnerships, one with Patagonia doing performance uh, outdoor wear, one with Stella McCartney doing high fashion. We debuted a piece in MoMA here about a week ago, and then two pieces in Fashion Week. Uh, you're going to see this continue from time and time again as we go through the thousands and thousands of materials we've made to make new properties that consumers are going to love. Is this like a, a whole new? This is like a whole new industry. This almost sounds like genetically modified food, but you do genetically modified material either for clothing or. Uh, did you see Lord of the Rings? You remember the mithril, oh, yeah. oh, that yeah. really light. Uh, stuff that they can you can't stab a wear sword and you yeah. can't even stab it, and it's very light. You could, yeah, you could make. Could you make Kevlar much lighter? Because because body armor is really. That was that heavy. was exactly the the inspiration in the very beginning. You read our very first. We wrote government grants and got funded uh, by SPIRs, and that was exactly what we were going after in the very beginning. We were talking about this during the commercial break before you sat down. You want to do this both um, as a white label, effectively, yeah. right? To sell yeah. to to others to manufacture, but you also want to do your own branded stuff. Yeah, so we, we do a mix, and why why the mix? Okay, because there, there's, there, within your, within your world, there's a debate about whether you should be in the mix sure. business. Uh, you know, we talked to a lot of brands that had come before, and everyone said understanding the consumer, the problems of the downstream customer is key. And so when we look to do things ourselves, we're really looking to understand very very quickly what's going on in the marketplace and answer questions, and then scale with partners. Will we continue to see partnerships from you and not uh, some company coming in and buying you up and saying we're going to take you in-house? Um, I think you'll continue to see quite a few partnerships. We've got a very strong pipeline going right now, uh, a lot of interest. And there's, this is an exciting space that there's not a whole lot of people playing in when it takes 14 right. years to get going. But is the model for this like DuPont, is this Lycra? Is that, is that yeah, is that, no, that's, that's a reasonable. That's, that's, is that the way to think about this? Yeah. This is the next version of, not Lycra, but but some kind of fabric that, that really Gore-Tex. becomes a, yeah. or Gore-Tex becomes a meaningful part of everybody. I would emphasize one thing. Think about it a little different from those brands where that was one property, right? Stretch to fit, waterproof and keep you dry when you're wet. Uh, this is a technology platform. We start with spider silk, but we've made four or 5,000 different molecules. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.